All right, in the setting sun, what I've got to do here is I want to cut rebar for each one of the bags. There's eight around, and then I want to put rebar down into the ground. I didn't put barbed wire between these, so that's what the rebar will be. So tie them all in. And then I want to leave a little bit of rebar stick up so that when I pour the cap, the cap will wrap around that. Then I know this will never go anywhere. Uh, same thing on this side. Uh, exact same process. So I'll be working on that. Let me do some measurements and uh, cut some rebar and pound one in, see how hard it is or not. It's been a week since I did these bags, and they are um, they did have 10% concrete in them. It's possible I can't get a rebar in there. We'll find out together. Well, each one of those each one of those walls is 24 inches high, so I'm going to go ahead and cut 26 inches, and that way I can leave a two-inch stub. Uh, on here, so let's give that a whirl. I'm gonna put one or two in before I go too far and make sure I can even drive it all the way down in. They don't have to be spot on, I'm just driving them down. Alrighty, let's pound one of these in. See what we think. All right, I like that. Now when I pour that cap, that won't go anywhere. All right, let me cut eight. That's gonna go right in. Let me, on this side, I'm gonna cut, uh, I've got half inch there, and then I had, that was three quarter inch. Let me get half inch and try, test it over there and see if it works. One reason why I'm doing this this way is because this is my idea for uh, doing the uh, side of the house. So these will be a little care more careful when I tamp them. You know, I'll make sure that they're, nice and flush against each other and then when I come in and stucco them they'll look real good but I want to make sure that I can feed rebar down through it and yeah I can that's going right in and then when I get to the top plate I'll be able to uh, pour a concrete top cap you know like on top of the roof and I, I know that will hold these bags in place. And then every, as I go up eight, uh, ten rows, I'll run a four-foot piece of rebar down through it periodically. Do I think it needs it? You know, I don't think so. I'm going to be honest.
side. And this is where Hyper Adobe beats Earthbag by a long shot. So it's ready. I've driven rebar down all the way through about, you know, 18 inches apart all the way down. So then when I pour the cap on there and make it look like a cliff, the cap will tie it all together. The stucco will be, you know, three quarter an inch thick. But this, I still have to put the mesh on. And, uh, well, it won't take long. It's not easy. <laughs> Hyper Adobe, I'm done. I didn't have to do anything. It came ready mesh. This, I got a mesh. And good, because I'm getting all fancy, you know, I've got weird things to do. Which I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do the weird things. I haven't decided. But I do know I got a bunch of tent stakes around. And I am convinced that those old tent stakes would be exactly what the doctor ordered. For this. It's all clean and stuff. Do you want to put this on? No. I'm I'm just wanted to do this before I got too far in. I have a bunch of tent stakes somewhere. Those are what I'll need to pin that done. But see how much faster hyper adobe is? Oh, a hundred percent. That right? And if this is all sloppy, I'm going to be pinning down. That is nice. I like the way Yeah, that. and I, you know, I haven't even gone back through and squared the edges yet. You know? It's so much. There's a big difference. It's uh, a lot easier to work with. But I wanted to put this on before the sunset for, for, so I could think on it. So moving forward, you're just going to go with the, the uh, Adobe, right? Not the, you're going to go with that, right? I'd only use earth bags if it was a standalone something like a, a mini shed or something. Yeah, far away that mm -hmm. um, that I, I don't know. I I just don't think I would, even though those are free. This was a lot harder work. I'm gonna this was hard work. I'm gonna put this in here in case you need it. <laughs> the earth bags are much harder work, and I'm not done with the hard work. It's all hard work. Where the hyper adobe. If I had the right tools, I'm only dealing with, uh, you know, 20 pounds of sand at a time, effectively. Because mm -hmm. it goes down where, uh, where you want it. And look, it's ready for, it's ready for uh, stucco. That's going to have a full two hours of me effing with it. And then as I stucco, something's going to jump off. Oh, yeah. Right? And I'm going to throw mud on me. And uh, so I need a lot of stakes, tent stakes, to just really anchor it to this weird shape you know and, and admittedly i'm going to pour concrete down it and make it a cliff so it doesn't have to be perfect you know mm -hmm. but um it's got to stay put while i do that because see and that one looks like it would stay put much better like, oh yeah you know that question. one's ready to stucco it literally is ready to stucco all right it's getting too dark to do video but i just wanted to put that first layer of mesh on and mm -hmm. see how hard it was it's not easy all right well let's get on to this whole stucco thing something i've never done ever in my life so raw do it yourself or here my goal is even more challenging well or maybe less challenging i'm not sure i want to make that wall look like a cliff face uh of the texas red dirt and i'll put a picture up of what that looks like here so my idea i ordered in iron uh oxide to add to the uh gray uh stucco scratch coat i'm i'm just gonna do scratch coat because theoretically this will end up under water scratch coat was nine dollars uh white uh, stucco that i can add dye to was thirty dollars and listen this is just an experiment honest to goodness if i hate it i could come in here and pull it all out one year and throw it in a dump but i'm hoping not Right? I'm hoping that I end up with something that I can look at and uh, this uh, bridge will be covered with uh, concrete, with uh, styrofoam concrete, light concrete. And um, I'm doing the, the same format on this bridge roof as I'll do on my real roof. So it's, it's an, ala, uh, an ala analog to the roof. So I'm hoping that I don't tear this out. But uh, certainly I can't just leave earth bags sit around my house. That looks bad. So I got done putting in all of the tie-ins. When I pour the, the cap on this, the, the cement will go around that. That'll keep the wall from ever caving in. Not that I'm really worried about it. 
Uh, let's see. In here, there, here I have uh, red dirt gravel. So you can see that I've been collecting red dirt gravel. Uh, and around here, I've got um, various uh, pieces of red brick that I'm going to stick in. Oh, I don't know, just different places like that. You know, and I hammer it in maybe, and maybe it won't go in. I don't know. So I'm going to get my dead blow hammer and see if I could get these in. Uh, at the very least, I'm hoping that up here I can, you know, pick this up enough to, to stick a few in. Yeah, I can. Sure, I can. There we go. So, you know, I'll pry a few up and get some bricks in there. Try to make that look, the top piece look like, you know, a little piece of cliff. Maybe that one is a piece of cliff. And then a few out here and there. Also on that side, the same deal. So without further ado, let me get working on all of that. I think I'll put you on stop motion because uh, this is going to take a while. All right, well, let me mix up this mud. And I'm going to mix it up on the ground. And I learned right away that this doesn't work. Um, I can't control the moisture. I can't control the mixing. I need a hard surface for this. But, oh, once committed, you know. <laughs> These are 80 pounds a piece, so this isn't, this isn't light work. Uh, and I'm, I'm not feeling real good still. This is the day 10 of me being out of the, out of commission, not feeling real good. But, uh, one thing, one thing that did work for me is I went ahead and added the red dye in there. And as I'm mixing that up, I'm, I'm getting red come through. So even in this, uh, substandard mixing method, uh, you know, I'm doing it. And uh, I'm sure the ancients, they probably made a little uh, flat area where they could mix a uh, solid mix or they use slaves to tromp it out somewhere. Uh, you can't tromp this stuff. Uh, you have to mix it with a shovel. If you step on it, it'll, it's just firm, you know, it's just firm. But I'm getting there on that. So once I'm all done mixing that, then I'll, I'll start the next phase. Uh, one other thing I wish I would have done is wash that uh, netting off so that it would stick a little better. But uh, I'm learning. Well, I am certainly not over this cold. This is exhausting to me, mixing and all this. Normally I'm in better shape than this. Oh my. I'm gonna get done with this pile of dirt. Make some video and think about this. I have a big cement mixer. I could see even, I thought, oh, this is a small batch. Uh, there is no such thing as a small batch of concrete, is there? In this case, not even concrete, it's stucco. Not mixed very well. Now, I think the red mix is working. I mean, as I'm pulverizing this in, it's getting redder and redder. Damn it. I think this wall might look like a cliff. I don't know. But for sure, I don't have the stamina to do this. I think I'll use this up, go as far as I can, that high. That was three bags, I'll measure it out. See how many bags I'll need in total. I got eight bags per side, but I knew that wouldn't be enough. <sighs>
20% done. That was three bags. I bought a total of uh, eight bags. So eight bags might uh, get me 60, 70% of the way there. So 10 bags per side. I am putting it on thicker than a half inch. That's a scratch, scratch coat. For me, it'll be the final coat because it's going to be underwater anyhow. Uh, my only goal here is to make it look like a cliff so it's decorative and to hold the water back and give a little more uh, structure to the earth bags. Plus, I'm learning how to stucco, and I learned a bunch already. I learned I need to wet the bags down before I start sticking stucco. I don't look, like how much sand and clay I mixed. I need to add a little more cement when I do the house. I want a 20% mix of cement, I believe, inside of each bag, each section of bag. Uh, simply because the sand's falling out of there and getting on the stucco and creating a barrier. Uh, but if I washed that down, that would have helped. Now, uh, eyeballing the uh, red inside there, I think that looks good. That's exactly how the cliffs are around here. They're all modeled, different colors, different textures. Now, that just right now looks like the clay that's around it. But um, if I could get it a brighter red, I would. Uh, and I might do a dye or a final coat over it if I want. But uh, once I get all the way done with the walls, then on the top, and that second shelf there, I'll go ahead and I'll glue in some stones to give it more of a cliff vibe. So that's what we'll be after. Uh, the other thing I learned, I've been uh, under the weather for 10 days. Just enough energy to do my day job and not anything left over. And every time I think I'm better, <laughs> I'm not. And uh, so I must have bronchitis or <sighs> something, right? I can't breathe anymore. And uh, it's getting in the way of sleep. It's... Leah says that I stop, stop breathing in the middle of the night. And I'm like, take me, sweet baby Jesus. I've seen enough of this world. And uh, But uh, I think it's coming, <laughs> of course, right before Christmas. It's, uh, but I'm going to go visit my doctor and have him check these lungs of mine, which I think are in trouble. Because uh, that exhausted me. Uh, about two hours of work. That's all I had. And now, granted, it was heavy work. Uh, you know, mixing is hard. It's hard work mixing cement so but and i'm out of breath very hard but i'm going to count that as successful unless i come back tomorrow and it all just falls off once it's hard then i'll put the next row up i probably will put some helper screws in it that i can snip off i don't care if they rust and come down that's the way the cliffs look now you do you in your neck of the woods you may not have red rock but uh so i'll put some some you know some screws in there just right along the line and mud it all in and go up another up to the top shelf and then I'll glue in the stones and then I'll do the last little bit and then I'll mud. So I wanted to do one of these a day and I think I could if I was in good health but I think 20% is all I'm going to get done today. Uh, I am in trouble so all right well there you go my idea is maybe working we'll know tomorrow if the stuff just flakes off uh, i guess i'll get in there and get aggressive with it and flake it we'll see but uh, uh this is steve a thousand years thanks for watching like subscribe follow me along thank you